This is a racist story, or so the mayor of Detroit would have you believe. It's about the city and the mayor, and it's no Valentine, which by his definition makes it a racist story. To attack Coleman Young, I've become a cold word for black. To, to attack Detroit is to attack black. Politicians run for office by attacking Detroit, by attacking Colbert Young. The media gets headlines. You're a symbol. By running bad, exactly. You get it. Coleman Young doesn't like criticism, especially from outsiders. But outsiders should take a look, a close look at Detroit, and wonder, could it happen here? The truth may hurt, but the truth is, Detroit is burning. Every city has arson fires, but only here is there one angry night like Devil's Night. Every year on Halloween Eve, while other cities have trick-or-treating and window soaping, Detroit is engulfed in an orgy of arson. It's a holiday tradition, sort of like a mean-spirited Mardi Gras. We were just sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden there was a burst of flame, and that was it. John Holden lived here for 31 years. It was gone in minutes. There were hundreds of fires like this during Devil's Night and the days before and after. Firefighters said there were nearly 400, but the city counted less than 300. Not surprising, Devil's Night is just more bad publicity for a city that already has plenty. This is hell. It's hell here on Devil's Night. Detroit is armed and dangerous. There are an estimated 1.2 million guns here, more guns than there are people. This 22 automatic, I keep, I keep that one under my pillow with me. Along with his 22, Art Sims owns a 9 millimeter automatic pistol, an assault rifle, and a sawed-off shotgun. He lives in one of Detroit's better neighborhoods. Five streets down, you got crack dealers, and you know you got people breaking in. They come down here, they see nice houses, they see nice things, and they want to break in. So you know I got to protect myself from them. You're prepared to use those? Yeah, at all times. Detroit is bleeding. If you're young, black, and male, you're more likely to die by violence than any other cause. <laughs> I didn't have to kill my brother. To... Last year, there were 400 children, aged 17 or younger, who were shot in the city. 40 were shot dead. It's like a whole generation is being wiped out. Uh, it's like... They just don't care about life. It's nothing to take a life. Gloria G's son lost his life last April. Police sources That's think a drug again, hit yeah. team shot him by mistake. Quentin G was 19. <laughs> when I visit the cemetery, what can I do is just say to myself, why? Why? Why is he there? He doesn't even know why he's there. <laughs> He even asked the question, why did anybody want to shoot me? Are you proud of Detroit? Certainly I'm proud of Detroit. I wouldn't be here if I were not. Coleman Young has been the mayor of Detroit for the past 17 years. Is it a safe place to live, a good place to live, a good it's place a good to raise a family? It's a good place to live, and I think it's as safe as any other. There's not a body on every corner, and the average uh, citizen in this city is not confronted with the, the, the fear of his life. So don't bring me that crap about Detroit. We're no different. We have the same problems as any city in America. Well, it's true. Most big cities do have the same problems as Detroit, and in some cases, they're worse. Washington has more murders. L.A. has more gangs. New York has more racial violence. America's cities are on a dark and dangerous road. But you come here, and you get the feeling that this, this is what the end of the road looks like. Here in Detroit, we have seen two worlds, one poor and black, one wealthy and white, two worlds with their backs turned to each other. Here in Detroit, we have seen the future, and it's frightening. We spent one night with the sheriff's narcotics squad raiding crack houses. At one, a couple arrived so desperate for drugs, they ignored the police cars in front and came in anyway. You always that stupid or you just work at it hard? At another house, the suspects included a mother of three, pregnant with her fourth. We've had families literally 
arrested families where the father, mother, sons, cousins, nephews, whatever, were all involved in the entire operation. Uh, I guess they pass on their traits, you know, pass on their craft to the next generation. You might be troubled by talk like that, especially coming from a cop. But Detroit's cops are overwhelmed by what has become a billion dollar a year business here. In fact, some black community leaders told us that the drug industry is now the biggest employer of young black men in Detroit. Do you understand your right? Crack rules in a city where once cars were king. Detroit put the world on wheels. In one generation, these and other names created America's number one industry. Then the bottom fell out. In the last decade, nearly a third of all auto workers lost their jobs and blacks were hit hardest. Detroit's unemployment rate is staggering. Infant mortality is twice the national average and almost three times as many Detroiters fall below the poverty line. The mayor will tell you that the reason Detroit's so bleak is because it's so black. In this country, black people are victims of racism. It's not accidental. The cities around the nation, they have the largest percentage of blacks, have the largest percentage of poverty, have the largest percentage of crime, have the largest percentage of unemployment. But in Detroit, blacks aren't just the majority, they're the authority. They run the police, the courts, the schools, and city hall. But black political power hasn't meant black economic prosperity. In my time in Detroit, I have driven and walked past mile after mile of decayed, rotting neighborhoods that look like war zones, of burned out buildings, I cracked have houses. If, you, if you've been coming in any length of time, those were there when I became mayor. And a whole lot of that's been restored. There are also people that say that any white mayor who had developed the downtown area and let the neighborhoods collapse would have been kicked out of office a long time ago. Well, that's bull****. That's pure propaganda. The neighborhoods collapsed because half the goddamn population left. In fact, Detroit, which at its peak in the 50s was home to 2 million and 80% white, today has less than 1 million, about 70% of them black. So now, when it's hammer time in the city, it's tea time in the suburbs. This is where whites went, taking their money and jobs with them. There are now more offices here than in Detroit. More stores, too, so there's no reason to go to the city. The only thing the suburbs lack are blacks. One study called these among the most segregated suburbs in America. Suburbs created by white flight and black rage. July 1967, the worst race riot in U.S. history. By the time it was over, 43 were dead and hundreds were hurt. Blacks were angry. Whites were terrified. Whites like Norm Bittner, who moved to the suburbs the year of the riot. I went to school with coloreds. I didn't want my wife being around coloreds. Why? Who wants them next to them? Everybody sees what they've done to Detroit. The white families have moved out of Detroit and left, the, left Detroit to the coloreds. What if a black family moved in next door to you here in Warren? Thing is, is today, suppose one family moves in, then another, then another. What do you have? Prostitution, drugs, gang fights, gangs moving in. Who needs this? That's what many white suburbanites told us, although like Bittner, they deny they're racist. They see Detroit as alien, threatening, a place they want no part of. Blacks in Detroit exercise more power than blacks anywhere in any city in the United States. And, and we refused in the city of Detroit to kiss their behinds. That scares the white establishment. Oh, I think it does. They resent it. There ain't no respectful way for a black to act in America. Young's contempt for the white suburbs has been a key part of his political success. Once, when the mayor was asked about enforcing gun control, he replied, I'll be damned if I'm going to let them collect guns in the city of Detroit while we're surrounded by hostile suburbs. To the mayor, it's quite simply us versus them. But there isn't complete harmony on that point. Oh. 
Reverend Jim Holly is one of Detroit's most outspoken ministers. He blames whites for deserting Detroit, but he says the mayor's hostility has kept them away. Whites have the money, blacks have the political power. The political power and the money have not been on the same track in the last 17 years. And as a result, you know, our city is falling apart. And it has, although there are still signs of life. New buildings under construction downtown, new developments rising on the riverfront, the lavishly restored Fox Theater, and yes, even some good neighborhoods. <laughs> It's a rare sight, blacks and whites dancing together, dining together. We're at a community dinner in North Rosedale Park. Here is a part of Detroit that might surprise you. Where everybody looks out for each other and where people care for their property and where the property value is, is actually quite high. Brenda Can is a banker, her husband Bruce a computer analyst. They can afford to raise their children in the suburbs, but they chose to stay in the city. We are not going to run from the crime and the drugs and the, the, the negatives. We're going to stay here and fight. Still, there are reports of an ominous new trend, black flight. Middle class blacks are moving out too, leaving Detroit to the underclass. A house was here at one time. We used to run all the way through here, man. We went for a walk with Alphonse Davis, who showed us the block in central Detroit where he grew up. This used to be a nice little community where everybody can just come and just chill out. They don't have to worry about nothing, you know what I'm saying? What happened? Times, man, everybody moved out. Everybody moved out. Alphonse was born the year of the riot, raised without a father, dropped out of high school. He used to deal drugs, says he's quit and needs a job. The jobs that I be looking for, I don't want no restaurant job. You know, that, that's beneath me. What do you mean beneath you? I mean, what's wrong with working what? in a restaurant? $3.85. What the hell is that? That ain't enough to spit on. Detroit has thousands like Alphonse, young men without any direction, products of what many see as a moral collapse in the ghetto. Racism has played a tremendous part in terms of, of setting Detroit back. But at the same time, I think it's only fair that no white man in the world can do as much to us in the city of Detroit that we've done to ourselves. Has there been a failure of black leadership? Well, Coleman Young's credibility has been hurt by a series of scandals. The latest involves charges that his police chief stole from a fund set up for undercover drug buys. Look, man, I have been hounded for 10 goddamn years with allegations, rumors, and not one concrete charge. Now, after 10 years, you get tired of that bull****. But your police chief? I wouldn't give a who it is. It's an investigation. There have been no findings. A federal grand jury is also looking into allegations that Young, a longtime black activist, had a secret business that sold Krugerrands, the gold coins that symbolize South African apartheid. We tried to bring that up, but the mayor cut us short. You came in here to do a chop job, obviously, no, and, and, and that's what you've done. That's not true. Oh, bull. But don't look, you look, think I'm through now? Let's, 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 let's. Why do you get so angry? Why do you get so defensive? I'm not defensive. I am angry. I'd be a goddamn fool to discuss with you on public uh, uh, television an allocation, which would be the same as taking a goddamn stand. And who the f you think you are to come in here and cross-examine me? Well, it's not a cross-examination. Well, it's a question. sure the hell is it? It's a question and a valid question. Yeah, uh, you're out of line. And as far as I'm concerned, the interview's concluded. As we said, the mayor doesn't like criticism, and he's mighty unhappy with this new book about Detroit. There's been a storm of controversy here over Devil's Night and its grim descriptions of the city. The author, Zev Hefetz, told us his is a cautionary tale. Detroit, in many ways, has always been an experimental city. Detroit was the first place to really industrialize in a modern way. It was the first city, really, where unions became a powerful uh, factor. Uh, it was the first city to feel the pinch of Japanese and other foreign competition. To a large extent, what's happened in Detroit has happened 10 or 15 or 20 years later uh, in other American cities. Detroit is a warning, if anybody's listening. 
A year after the riot, a presidential commission predicted that America was heading toward a sort of reverse apartheid, poor black cities surrounded by rich white suburbs. This is the future they warned us about. And as for Detroit's future, well, some experts predict another 200,000 gone by the end of the decade. By then, the only people who haven't left Detroit may be those who can't. Which made us think back to Gloria G. She told us that since her son was murdered, she'd wanted to get out of town. But now I'll find it a little difficult to kind of leave it because my, my baby is buried here. And I want to stay around to keep flowers on his grave. I want to stay here and keep flowers on his grave. Children dead, homes abandoned, hopes dashed. You don't need to come here on Devil's Night to see that Detroit is burning. I miss you, Quentin. We all miss you. Such a baby, still a baby. Oh, God.